Hello and welcome to the Apps Anywhere 3.1 webinar. I'm Spencer Vale, I'm the product manager at Apps Anywhere and today you join me in our UK headquarters. It's a converted Old English pub, the Foresters Arms. I've got some of the Apps Anywhere team with me today physically in the audience and you're joining me at the bar virtually. I've got our UI lead, Lewis, moderating the questions. So whilst I'm going through this presentation, please drop any questions you want to know about Apps Anywhere 3.1. Uh, there's a question box you can select on your webinar panel, and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can at the end of the presentation. So today is all about Apps Anywhere 3.1. We launched this last week, last Wednesday. Hope, hopefully you've seen that and are excited about it, which is why you're here today and you want to find out more about our latest release. So I'm going to talk you through all the features and show you what you can come to expect in this new version of Apps Anywhere. So the first feature I'm going to talk about is user portal preferences. So over previous releases, we've actually done a lot of work on the user experience of Apps Anywhere. And we've taken on some of your feedback around the changes that we've made and we've enhanced this even further in 3.1. We've added a user preferences section. So as you can see here, we're not just allowing users now to select their language and also their theme, building on the dark mode setting that we offered in Apps Anywhere 3.0. We're also giving options around how many apps that they can display on their home screen. Now, this is not a global setting, this is a user preference. It previously, you will have seen that the number of apps on the home screen was two rows of three apps, so a total of six apps. Now we're giving users the option of how many they want to see in rows of four, so up to a total of 20 apps. And in that scenario, it will look like this. So this is the 20 app example. So that's for users who like lots of icons and they like to be able to see their jumping off points and what apps they're going to launch. If they like a cleaner view, they've got that option as well. They've also still got the grid view. So if they want to have a more web store portal like experience, they can still go there. But one of the bits of feedback that we've acted on is how to address that day one experience for new students. So previously um, we've kind of describe the recent collection and the favorites collection is probably the two most powerful smart collections in terms of how to customize that student experience and allow them to build up their own collections of apps. Um, well, what we've done to address the day one uh, scenario is to add a new collection called apps. You'll see that in this screenshot here presented on the far left of the collections. So the first time when a user kind of joins, it will default to this. And this is an alphanumeric collection of all the apps that they've got available in Apps Anywhere. So it means that from that first jumping on point, they can see all the applications that are available to them. Once they start launching applications or they start adding some favorites, then that's when the recent and the smart collections, the favorite smart collection starts to build that more customized view. And likewise, in terms of a selected collection so in this example here you can see the favorites collection is highlighted if i were to log out now and log back in i would land on the favorites again so we're kind of removing the number of clicks to get to your preferred experience on the note of customization we've also added more languages in 3.1 so we're now offering saudi arabian arabic and also welsh as professionally translated and verified languages. That brings our total number of languages up to 10, including UK English, Catalan, Danish, German, French Canadian, Norwegian, Spanish, and US English, as well as obviously Arabic and Welsh now. So that's a multilingual experience for everybody um, and hopefully kind of helps with our international community. The next item I want to talk about is what I would say is the key feature of Apps Anywhere 3.1, which is pre-launch dialogues. Now, this has been a highly requested feature. It's something we've had feedback on, and it kind of provides further flexibility and customization to an application. This feature gives admins the ability to configure some custom text for any app that will display to the user when they launch the app. So in this example here, you can see 
there's a dialogue and it can be used to impart any important information to the user at that point of launch. So it could be an example like an end user license agreement. It could be a license key for a software download. It could be any kind of warning or anything that you want them to acknowledge. Basically, whatever you want it to be. In this example here, you can see that it's possible for the user to say, don't show me this message again in the future. They can suppress this dialogue and the next time they launch it, it won't appear. In that example, um, they will still get back to it. Let's say that they clicked on it by accident, they suppressed it and then they moved on and launched the app. If they want to get back to that information again, it's not gone forever. They can still find it in the launch success dialog, as you see in the bottom of this uh, graphic here. But in the case that you want to force users to see the dialog again, maybe you've edited it and you want the information that is now different to be conveyed to everybody, regardless of whether they've suppressed that dialog or not, then you can make sure that they're forced to read and accept it again through a reset option. Alternatively, it's possible to make the pre-launch dialog appear every single time. So what you're looking at now is the pre-launch dialog edit screen within the admin pages. Note that this is a rich text editor that we've added to this screen. We've also added that screen to the description editor as well. And I should note at this point that pre-launch dialogues don't replace app descriptions. They still exist, but this is an additional set of custom text that you can add. And as you can see from this screen, in the case that it's essential that the user is informed about something every time that they launch, you can tick this box on the bottom left-hand corner and it will remove the option for the users to suppress the pre-launch dialogue. So in a world like that, the dialogue will look more like this. Note that there isn't a checkbox now. They have to click cancel or continue. So this will appear to them every single time that they launch an app. Now, having spoken to so many customers that have been expressing an interest in pre-launch dialogues and, and, and wanting this feature, and we've heard your feedback, I know that this is gonna benefit a lot of people. And the great thing is that both this and the user preference feature came from your feedback, and we really do value it. Which brings me on to the feedback forum. So I hope you've all seen this, but if you haven't, this is the feedback forum that we launched in December. And if you haven't signed up to it yet, I'll encourage you to do so. We'll drop a link to it in the chat and you'll be able to kind of go straight off to that feedback forum. And it's a place that you can raise your suggestions, you can vote on other people's suggestions, and you can comment on other people's suggestions and get a little discussion going. Um, it gives us a real sense of the problems that you'd like us to solve with Apps Anywhere in future versions. The great thing about this forum is we can integrate it with our development workflow. So as we start to investigate ideas or develop those ideas further, the forum gets automated real-time updates. So you can see this either through kind of an email that will be triggered if you, if you kind of have uh, voted or commented on a post, but you'll also be able to kind of see this in a roadmap view. So as you'll see from this view here, you can see what items are in progress and what we've got planned. So in progress means we're actually working on it right now. Planned means that we're kind of getting that ready to start work on. And under review means that we're data gathering or we're investigating solution options, but it gives a good indicator of what might be coming down the track. If any of you raised, comment, or voted on any of the features that we developed in 3.1, when we released it last Wednesday, you will have received a notification that it went live and these features are now finished and ready for you. So on the note of feedback, I hope you've been sending your questions through. If you haven't already, start them coming through. Have we had any coming through yet, Lewis? Yeah? Great, we've got a few questions coming up, so we'll get to those shortly but I've got a few more things to share with you about 3.1. So the next thing I want to talk about is the improved accessibility in 3.1. So at Apps Anywhere, we really champion accessibility and we worked very hard on this over recent releases. And in this latest version, we've worked with some experts in this field, the Digital Accessibility Center. They gave us feedback, they tested our portal and we've made 
over 70 seamless changes to the way it works based on their feedback. So that includes improving the key, keyboard navigation or improving support for screen readers, uh, various different changes that we've made to give uh, an improvement to accessibility as a whole and to be as inclusive as possible with the Apps Anywhere experience. It makes Apps Anywhere 3.1 the most accessible yet. Another essential change that we've made in 3.1 is to move the appliance from CentOS 7 to Rocky Linux 8. Now, again, this should be seamless. You shouldn't notice any difference here, really. But we had to do this because CentOS 7 is going end of life next summer, June 2024. So I'd encourage everyone to upgrade to Apps Anywhere 3.1. Ahead of that, make use of it this window. Um, all you've got to do is raise a ticket with support and let's start that process going. Like I say, you shouldn't notice any change here, but I would say it does lay foundations for things that we want to do in future releases. So the great, great thing is we've made steps towards something that's going to come in 3.2, which is the ability to deliver upgrades in place. So that means a huge time saving for you when it comes to the upgrade process. That's not in 3.1, but we've laid the foundations for it. The last change to mention in 3.1 is in the admin dashboard. So you'll notice here in the did you know and what's new panels on the right hand side, we've got information about what's in the latest release. And we've got some other information that we want to share with you. It might be information that we want to signpost. Now, in previous releases, this has always been kind of hard coded into that release. But now with 3.1 onwards, we've got the ability to update that outside of that release sh schedule or release cycle. So whether you've upgraded or not from 3.1 upwards, this is, you'll be able to see what the latest information is. It will tell you more about what's coming if you haven't upgraded yet, and we'll be able to kind of share um, kind of real time or at least kind of timely information with you in the admin dashboard itself. So speaking of announcements, there's a few things I want to share with you. That was Apps Anywhere 3.1. Hopefully, you're all aware of our automated app licensing feature, which has been around since uh, 211. For those that are not, this is where we provide a range of ready to deploy packaged applications, which can be automatically licensed upon launch by Apps Anywhere. So compatible applications are downloaded from us and we can automatically license them using your existing software license. Um, it's a great service, and I'm proud to say we've got over 90 licensed packaged applications as part of this service. And some of these are huge hitters like Arch, ArcGIS, Ansys, SolidWorks, MATLAB, and even the Adobe Suite. Now, I'm pleased to say that we have also added an Autodesk bundle. So that's another 13 apps in itself, and it's one that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to. Another announcement to make is um, regarding Summit. So Summit is uh, an event that's coming next week in the UK. We had one in Canada last month. Um, this is an exciting event at Birmingham City University on the 29th of June. If you're in the UK and you can make it to this event, we've got some fantastic speakers lined up for you. We've we've even got a Paralympian, Darren Harris, who's going to give a motivational talk. Um, so if you haven't registered yet, I'd encourage you to sign up to this um, and we'll drop the link into the, the chat for you to register. I would say that our summit events are now annual. It will be our only in-person one in the UK this year. So if you're in the UK, don't miss your chance to attend it. It's going to be a really good event. So that was it for Apps Anywhere 3.1. Uh, let's have a look at what questions we've got coming through. So we've got a few here, let's have a look. So um, when can we upgrade? Well, it's it's up to you basically. If you're ready to upgrade, all you've got to do is go, go through to support and start raising the ticket. We'll drop the support link in the chat and you can get that scheduled with the team and you can get that ball rolling on 3.1. Um, does the admin portal have dark mode? No, it doesn't yet. Dark mode, it's so popular, dark mode. I can't believe how much people love this one. Um, 
we do actually want to do that for, for admin to do that in in the admin pages there's a lot more pages there'd be a lot more work to do to kind of make that fit so obviously the largest user base is the end user group so we've obviously addressed that first so it's something we may come to it's not in the pipeline right now i'm afraid Would it be possible to log into the feedback forum using a work or school account? So basically you just, it's, uh, you have to log in with your email address. You sign up with your email address and, um, and, and a username. It's, it's, it's basically that, that kind of functionality. So you have to sign up to it and we, we can obviously see who's signing up. Uh, on the dark mode for admin, Oh, no, sorry, another question here. Any tentative ETA on 3.2? So, yes, uh, our ambition is to get that out this fall or this autumn, depending on where you are. Um, so we, we should be releasing 3.2 later on this year. We've got two things that we're working on in that. Um, one is the concept of an application library, which will make it easier to use templates to add applications to the system, as well as the in-place upgrades. Um, that I mentioned before. So yeah, 3.2 should be coming later this year. Any plans for future user preferences? Uh, that's a great question. I think that's one that I would hand that back over to, to you guys. We want to hear your feedback. We've got the feedback forum now. If there are other things that you think users would like to see in that preference and be able to kind of make changes, uh, please let us know. Let's Let's get that that um, get that going. Is there any French support for Quebec? So I assume that means actual IT support rather than uh, translations within the product. Um, we don't we don't provide that right now. Um, so that's something that we'll have to have to take away and have a look at. But uh, are you assuming you mean the if you could clarify, then we can come back to that question. I think that's everything we've got. Are there any more coming through, Lewis? Just a few that there's a few that would be interesting. Okay, so I think that's it for questions. I would say thank you everyone for your attendance and for your engagement in this. I really hope you're looking forward to 3.1. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, let's get your upgrade scheduled. Let's get you up and running with 3.1. It is, it is an exciting release. Um, we'll be sharing more information about Apps Anywhere and the future of it in forthcoming weeks and months. You know, um, at the summit event next week, for example, or other conversations that I have with you. Uh, and I look forward to speaking to you all again soon. So have a great day.